Hello everyone and welcome to the episode 15 uh, of my mobile networks overview course after a very long time uh, I was very busy and uh, I started to continue this course and um, hopefully I will record um, one episode per week or uh, per two weeks okay uh, let's continue uh, from the previous uh, course that uh, it was uh, about uh, GPRS network structure or um, briefly PS packet switch network so uh, we talked about the network elements in PS we've introduced SGSN, GGSN, charging gateway and uh, some other uh, uh, network elements in brief uh, if you wanna more details you can send me email and I will you uh, will send you the related documents uh, from now on we will go through some uh, basic scenarios in the PS uh, especially in 2G 3G but after that we will go in the details of EPC about packet core which is the uh, PS core network of the 4G LTE network Uh, in this picture you see you can see a, a very important uh, a network entity in the PS which is DNS as you know DNS is domain name system we have two types of DNS in the uh, mobile network one of them is GI DNS that uh, that uh, function you all of them you know that here uh, we have a DNS server that uh, resolve the name or domain name to IP address this is the uh, as you know and it works on the layer uh, layer 70 OS, OSI or uh, the layer 4 or 5 in the TCP IP which is the application layer okay uh, this is but in the mobile networks in the, in the internal core network we have also another DNS uh, that uh, has uh, lots of function and, and very important especially in the PS part you can see some of the uh, some of its role here it resolves the APN to a GGSN IP uh, you know uh, each subscriber in the PS network which have activated its data service has an APN as an APN so uh, DNS resolve a ggsn ip uh, resolve the apn to a ggsn ip in the pdp activation procedure uh, please remember that in the terminology of 2g and 3g we have pdp uh, terminology but in the 4g later i will, uh, will discuss that we don't have uh, we will not use pdp uh, more and we will use bearer terminology okay bearer bearer is a for example something that uh, carries uh, uh, something okay for example like a tunnel uh, when i when i hear bearer uh, in my mind comes this for example it can go through this data or voice or something else it can carry uh, the things that uh, we give to him okay uh, so one of this function the second is resolve the RAA routing area identity to SGSN IP uh, as I told to you SGSN is a gateway uh, from one side to the radio part and from another side for GGSN so it resolves the RAA uh, routing area identity to SGSN IP in NTRS, uh, inter SGSN routing area update procedure and Resolve the RNC ID to SGSN IP in the relocation procedure in 3G. These are uh, some examples, but not limited to this. And it has uh, many other functions, especially in the uh, scope of IMS network that I will discuss later. Uh, it has uh, many functions. In uh, some networks, uh, uh, I, we will um, discuss later very much about that. Uh, some uh, network entities uh, enum that is uh, responsible for uh, converting the for uh, the different format numbers and dns comes together and uh, 
form ENS. If you if you hear or see ENS some somewhere, you you can uh, you you will know that it's the combination of two network entity. Okay. Let me clear all of them to see the scenario. You can see that this mobile subscriber sends its request, for example, maybe this because it's sending this to DNS and uh, is looking for a GGSN. Maybe this is the fair scenario because it's sending the request to DNS. And please remember that, uh, according to my uh, also my teaching in the previous lessons, many in many ca uh, cases and scenarios, BSS part we. Uh, base station subsystem or radio or RSS part uh, doesn't do anything with this and transparently uh, send this message to the core in many scenarios okay so we can see that uh, it sends it requests to SGSN SGSN uh, uh, pass it to the DNS DNS uh, will send the GGSN IP address uh, in the end and the answer and respectively SGSN send its request to that GGSN okay and you can see that this is the first scenario very briefly uh, but here are some uh, very uh, basic scenarios in the PS part Mm, but uh, I think uh, we will discuss them more in L in uh, EPC part because uh, when you study EPC, they are very similar, and also nowadays uh, we don't have, for example, uh, another uh, uh, previous old networks like SGS and GGL. We have EPC, and this EPC in many networks that I know, maybe in your country or in part, is different. But as uh, to the best of my knowledge, right now uh, we have a EPC and it can handle the PS for both uh, three or four or even four generations like 2G, 3G, 4G and also the P it's the core PS for these three and also for the non-standalone uh, non architecture for 5G, okay, which we will discuss later. So uh, here uh, we can see the first scenario in PS, uh, which is attach procedure. Attach is like uh, location update in the CS that uh, we discussed uh, in many uh, many lessons before uh, in the CS part. Okay, and uh, mm, please remember that. As I told, as I also told to you, we have a type of combined combined location update, which is the uh, combination of CS and PS. It's the LU in the CS part and uh, attach in the PS part. It is combined location update. One of the uh, very famous types of location update. Okay. So when we talk about the attach, it's the it's a terminology in the PS. Okay, we see that mobile subscriber sends the attach request to the new SGSM. Why we say new SGSM? Because maybe it is uh, maybe or surely uh, it is uh, changing its location. So uh, there's um, there may be an old SGSM there. Okay. Uh, so we will send the attach request to new SGS SGSN and the new SGSN sends, uh, may send or may not send, it's optional, an identification request to the old SGSN. For example, to get the IMI or IMSI or something else because uh, in some scenario or some networks according to the configuration, um, maybe uh, the attach request or location of the request start with TMZ or PTMZ uh, in order of uh, preventing from uh, uh, spreading the IMZ in the network in, in the case of uh, increasing security okay uh, but 
if this uh, if also this is not maybe this is not successful or something else it can also ask from the mobile subscriber directly here you can see I didn't request or an I didn't response and I say again this can be optional then we can see a security procedure starts here authentication procedure authentication means that the network in the um, you know in the uh, early um, generations of mobile networks the authentication was not very was not very strong as you can see here in 2g 3g it's a one-way authentication for example just network authenticate authenticate the mobile subscriber or user equipment but in the it is in 2g 3g but in 4g 5g both authenticate each other and it is very high level of uh, security uh, especially in the 5g also the level of security is very good and high because it also encrypt the imz from the first point from the first moment and this is a very high secure in comparison to the uh, previous generations so we can see that we have authentication uh, procedure which i told to you that in the 2g and 3g is a one way uh, one way direction authentication is not mutual and here if uh, image checking is active uh, is is on in the network according to configuration and it's also optional uh, we will have image checking here image checking uh, will send uh, uh, IMI, IMEI to the EIR center equipment identity register and he will uh, send back the status of the, uh, the of your equipment of the equipment for example it is white or black or something else and then if uh, also image checking was successful then new SGSM will send an update location to the HLR or HSS you know that HLR uh, is a terminology for 2G but HSS is uh, related to 3G and 4G and we use UDM unified data management terminology for 5G uh, something uh, like HSS in the previous generations so uh, after this uh, successfully this message sent to the uh, have sent to the HLR then HLR sends a cancel location to the old SGSN because they want to make sure that the uh, location information is uh, successfully deleted from the old SGSN and uh, the old SGSN will send a cancel location acknowledgement to the HLR in this step HLR uh, will, uh, uh, will uh, comfortably <laughs> with, a, with a comfortable mind <laughs> send an insert subscriber data to the new SGSN so uh, as a, because uh, the, the reason that I said that comfortably it was that uh, he will he is now sure is now sure that uh, sure that uh, the location and uh, information of the um, in the old SGSN is deleted and removed so it will send and forward the subscriber data the profile and everything el everything about uh, data needed uh, to know in the SGSM from the subscriber to the to him this is very important message insert subscriber data when you see in the CS or PS no, uh, no difference but it's very important because it's sending and forwarding the substantial information and data about the subscriber and it will also the new SGSM will acknowledge it and at last uh, an update location acknowledgement in the uh, in the answer of this request will send from HLR to the new SGSN and in this in this part an attach accept will send from uh, new SGSN to the mobile subscriber and attach complete so when you run for example uh, in the in late uh, later we, we, sh we should discuss more about the kpi and kqi so a uh, very simple question here 
if I ask from you that how can you um, how can you calculate attached success rate in this scenario mm, you can pause video in this in this uh, moment and I can um, write for you as long as you are uh, thinking we can see that the attached success rate in this uh, simple scenario will will be the number of attached accept uh, to the number of attached requests for example in one hour so the number of uh, if we say this is the counter this is this counter is a1 and this counter is a2 so the number of the number of a2 means that the number of attached accepts to the number of attach uh, requests uh, to the hundred percent it will be the formula kpi formula for attached success rate you know it's very simple for example if in a network we have uh, 100 um, 100 requests but um, for example 98 per 98 of them uh, was attached accept so this network attached success rate is 98 percent that is not bad it's good okay these are also these are some these are some reject calls by uh, generated by gprs network that you can see what we are not going through the details of them because you can read them in the document and also you can ask me to send them and we can see that illegal ms or illegal me may be the mobile subscriber uh, mobile uh, equipment is not legal and uh, also another scenarios for example maybe in a area gpr service is not allowed or uh, in a plmn for example you don't have roaming or uh, location area not allowed and no suitable cell in the location area these are some reasons that uh, we can you can read more about them but as you know this is just an overview course and we cannot go through the details of them but uh, in the my goal in the first uh, step of these videos is to give you a brief introduction then uh, according to the request uh, we can go through the details okay and this is the detach procedure very simple detach uh, happens when for example when you power off the phone or uh, make your phone in the airplane mode and uh, these are some examples for detached procedure so it's very simple you can see that ms will send a detached request to the sgsn sgsn respectively send the delete PDP context request to the GGSN to delete this PDP uh, and as a consequence SGGSN will also send a uh, response this request and it will acknowledge that I okay I deleted the context and here the detach will accept it so and this is in this step we will have uh, successfully release the PS signaling connection and you know you see that this is the uh, uh, bit structure of this for example bit 4 uh, shows uh, is assigned for power off or bit 1 to 3 is the type of detach we, uh, in the later maybe we can go uh, through the details in the Wireshark file that I will share with you in the next uh, course mm, in the course 16 i think i will show you some uh, real wire charge scenarios okay in the next um, course uh, that is uh, that will be episode 16 we will go to the uh, very interesting topic 4g lt and epc and uh, hopefully if we could have time uh, i will show you some real scenarios and uh, uh, real examples with Wireshark files if we didn't have time enough in the episode 16 in the episode 17 I will do this and but I will see you again and uh, I will happy I'm uh, I'm very happy of 
saying your good comments, your kind comments. Thank you very much for uh, making me inspire to do this and continue this um, knowledge sharing. It's the smallest thing that we can do. Okay, that I can do for you, and I hope that I can continue this uh, knowledge sharing uh, mission as long as I'm alive. Okay, uh, very happy to see you, and hope this video was. Uh, uh, useful and informative for you. See you again. Bye.